And here is the Writer's Almanac for Sunday. It's the 17th of March, 2019. It's feast day of the patron saint of Ireland, though we must point out St. Patrick himself was English. He was not Irish. And until fairly recently, St. Patrick's Day was celebrated only as a religious holiday in Ireland. People got the day off from work. They went to church. They had a big roast dinner with their families, and the pubs were required to remain closed. It was the Irish in America and Canada who turned the Saints' Day into the big party that it has become. Parades, a big part of it. New York City's is the largest in the world, although Boston had the first one in 1737. In New York City, the march up Fifth Avenue, 150,000 marchers, the 69th Infantry Regiment leading the way. In Dublin, the parade has grown into a five-day festival. Millions of people come every year, and the consumption of Guinness stout more than doubles. Today, around 13 million pints will be drunk around the world. It was on this day, 1941, the National Gallery of Art opened Washington, D.C., the project of Andrew Mellon, the industrialist and secretary of the Treasury. In 1930, Mellon had the chance to buy art from the Hermitage in St. Petersburg, Russia. Stalin had ordered the museum to raise money for the government, sell off valuable pieces, and Mellon was there. He bought 121 paintings, including work by Raphael, Rembrandt, Botticelli, and Jan van Eyck. In 1936, he wrote to President Roosevelt offering to donate his collection as well as $15 million to build a museum, a neoclassical museum in Washington. The architect John Russell Pope construction began June 1937, and neither Andrew Mellon nor Mr. Pope lived long enough to see it completed. They died in late August 37, within 24 hours of each other. The National Gallery, admission always free to the public, more than four and a half million people visit it every year. And it's the birthday of the novelist Penelope Lively, born in Cairo, 1933, author of The Road to Litchfield, Treasures of Time, and According to Mark. Grew up in a suburb of Cairo, studied history at Oxford. Her novel Moon Tiger won the Booker Prize in 1987 a book in which she wrote, We open our mouths and outflow words whose ancestries we do not even know. We are walking lexicons in a single sentence of idle chatter. We preserve Latin, Anglo-Saxon, Norse. We carry a museum inside our heads. Each day we commemorate peoples of whom we have never heard. Here's a poem for today by David Mason, Father's and sons. Some things they say one should not write about. I tried to help my father comprehend the toilet, how one needs to undo one's belt to slide one's trousers down and sit, but he stubbornly stood and would not bend his knees. I tried again to bend him toward the seat and then I laughed at the absurdity, fathers and sons, how he had wiped my bottom half a century ago, and how I would repay the favor if he would only sit. Don't you, he gripped me, trembling, searching for my eyes, don't you, but the word was lost to him. Somewhere a man of dignity would not be laughed at. He could not see it was the crazy dance that made me laugh, trying to make him sit when he wanted to stand. A poem by David Mason, Fathers and Sons, from The Sound, New and Selected Poems, published by Red Hen Press, and used by permission here on The Writer's Almanac. 
Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.